Tonight, Joe Biden's campaign trail story that is raising questions. Moments ago, the vice president responding to criticism that he was conflating three different true stories while trying to tell a moving story about a war hero in Afghanistan. Here's what he told the Washington Post, which had been fact-checking Biden's claims. What is the gaff when I said there was a young man I tried to pin a medal on? He said, I don't want it, sir. He died. He died. He died. And there was a young man, my recollection was, that in fact pulled a colleague of his out of a burning Humvee, and he risked his life doing it, and the young man died that he tried to save. That is not entirely the story he told. Here is part of the story Biden told last week. Young Navy captain, Navy, Navy, up in the mountains in the Konar Valley in Afghanistan. One of his buddies got shot, fell down a ravine about 60 feet. This guy climbed down a ravine, carried this guy up on his back under fire, and the general wanted me to pin the silver star on him. I got up there and stand, this is God's truth, my word is a Biden. He stood at his attention. I went to pin him. I said, sir, I don't want the damn thing. Do not pin it on me, sir. Please, sir, do not do that. He died. He died. Out front now, one of the reporters that fact-checked Biden's story, Matt Visor of the Washington Post. Uh, Matt, you heard Biden's response to the questions about the story. Uh, what's your reaction? Yeah, I mean, uh, the re reaction is uh, he's emphasizing today in an interview with uh, my colleague Jonathan Capehart um, the story of Chad Workman, uh, which is a very compelling story uh, involving an incident in Wardak province in Afghanistan that happened uh, at which he got a medal, a bronze medal in 2011. Uh, and, and it does the incident does occur as Biden has described it, um, and as uh, Workman, who we spoke with, describes it. Uh, the problem is that that's not the story that Biden told uh, last week. It's also not the story that he was telling in 2016 uh, on two occasions. Uh, so he's been telling a different story that has, um, at the core of it, this emotional story uh, about uh, Workman, uh, Sergeant Workman, but in, in, a, in a different context. So what, what did he get right and what, did he, what crucial details did he get wrong? So on, on Friday, he got wrong several elements uh, talking about going to the Kunar province, which is in a, a different area than the one that Workman was in. Uh, in Kunar, it, uh, he went as a senator, not as a vice president, as he stated the other night. Uh, there was not a Navy captain involved, as he said the other night. It's an Army sergeant in, in, in Workman's case. Uh, he's not pinning a medal on anybody in uh, Kunar province. He's, he's pinning a me medal on somebody uh, a, a later in Wardock province. Um, and, and then the other element is that he's describing this uh, ravine and somebody falling down a ravine and, and going to uh, retrieve a fallen colleague. Uh, that is an incident that did occur uh, in Wardock province. And uh, the uh, military member involved with that, Kyle White, got the Medal of Honor, uh, which was given by Barack Obama at the White House. Uh, so he's, he's using, s there's several different stories that are true, uh, that are told in a way that, that is not true. Um, and the emotional core, again, involving uh, one of the uh, soldiers it did, in fact, happen. Um, and, and that climax that you hear where Biden is emotional is one that, that occurred, just not in the context at which he's been describing it. Matt Pfizer, thanks very much. Out front now, April Ryan, White House correspondent for American Urban Radio Networks, and Lisa Lehrer. She's national political cor correspondent for The New York Times. April, are these significant uh, differences in the story he's telling here? Yes, there are significant differences, but Jim, what you have to look at, we are in a climate of lies being thrown at us uh, from the President of the United States, and we're so hypersensitive about issues of lies. People who are prone to gaffes, we are now holding them to the same standard, putting that bright spotlight on, looking at it as a lie like this President tells, versus saying, oh, that's Joe Biden, he is prone to gaffing. Um, at issue uh, is the fact that this Staff Sergeant Workman did say, you know, he died. Do not pin the medal on me. Mm -hmm. All the other stuff is important, but was it something that it's been so long and he just couldn't get the story right, or was it an out-and-out -out lie? That's the question. And we have someone in the White House who we know is a liar, uh, point blank. And now this this 
person who's running for president is known to gaffe. He needs to get it right if he tells the story. But was it intentional? That's the question. And I don't think it was. Lisa, let's play more of what Biden just told the Washington Post about the story. Have a listen. I want to get your reaction. I was making the point how courageous these people are, how incredible they are, this generation of warriors, these fallen angels we've lost. And so that, I don't know what the problem is. I mean, what is it that I said wrong? I mean, Matt, Matt Visor, Lisa, was making a point about the location in Afghanistan, different provinces, et cetera. Does that fundamentally change the meaning of the story he was trying to tell? Well, I think, you know, the emotional core is there, as Matt pointed out earlier in this in the show. But I think the question for Joe Biden is whether this becomes part of a larger narrative about his gas and not only about his gas, but about his readiness and his ability to go head to head with Donald Trump. You know, you have this very risk adverse Democratic Party electorate that just wants to find somebody more than anything else that they feel is the strongest candidate to beat Donald Trump. And Biden has positioned himself as the most electable. And if he starts looking like a riskier choice, you know, through getting details and stories like this wrong, through uh, offhand comments that he would argue are misinterpreted, and just little mistakes like uh, last week when he, ref he was in New Hampshire and said he loved Vermont, things like that. He starts looking like someone who's more risky to Democrats. You could see this race uh, start to turn, and there is a possibility that he could lose his commanding position in this primary. And that's really where I think the real risk comes in for him. April, to your point, though, uh, we do have a sitting president who d deliberately propagates falsehoods virtually every day. Deliberately. H have, have the metrics of a campaign changed in the past? A gaffe, uh, a, a mistold story might have been consequential. I mean, are the standards different now when you have someone who deliberately lies every day? Yeah, the standards are different. Everything has changed. Um, Donald Trump is a game player who changes the whole uh, game of spades, I declare war, whatever you want to play, or Monopoly be at that. Um, what happens is now we are very hypersensitive at anything anyone says because we're holding this president at, at, at such a, an account with fact checking. That's one of the big things. I mean, for us to watch a president deliver a speech and in real time fact check, that is saying something. We have never had to really do that before. I mean, you have pundits talking back and forth after, but to fact check during that time. We want answers. We want truth. This is saying uh, today what's happening with Biden is that we don't want a repeat of what President Trump is doing. And that's why they're holding Joe Biden and others to this higher standard. Fact checking is always great. But, you know, people like Joe Biden, that's one of the things that we love to love about him and love to hate about him is the fact that he is he is who he is. He's this guy who's like, he's real. You know me. You know me. But he's prone to gaffing. But he has to hold himself to a higher standard because we are fact checking. Lisa, I suppose before we go, just a quick thought. I mean, the question gets the sharpness for what is going to be a long and brutal uh, presidential election campaign. Right. And I think the, the question and the question that April is really posing here is whether the standard that Trump has been able to coast by on his party, Republicans, his sky high approval ratings, he, they don't care that he uh, that he lies and that he gets things wrong. The question is whether that standard applies in the Democratic Party and applies to candidates who don't have the last name Trump. And that's part of what this primary is going to test, at least when it comes to Joe Biden. And then the difference, of course, between lying versus factual errors. We're going to be watching closely. Okay. Lisa, April, great to have you on.